Hey guys, and welcome back to another Code Next Souls video. Today we're in the floodlands of Siptar building a base on an ancient pillar. This base overlooks the Savannah and the Ashlands. Speaking of the Ashlands, we saw in the Sorcerer's Lair build that something was lurking there. You've probably seen some of the teasers already, so I think it's time to find out what lays amongst the ash. Season 3 of Settlers starts on Friday the 7th of April for a 7 episode run, one episode releasing per week on Friday at 9.30pm BST. However, for now, let's get back to the build at hand. The requirements are on screen now, and it's a fairly simple build. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I started off with of course the base plate. I drew this out firstly using sandstone foundations, onto which I then place reinforced stone fence foundations. Once I'd done that, I removed the sandstone and replaced it with insulated wooden square and wedge ceilings. I next moved on to the elevator platform. I placed an arcane stone doorway to mark the entrance and transitioned out from the central base plate with wedges. From there, I built a 5 foundation long walkway, step down one notch at each foundation. The eventual length of this bridge will be a little bit longer, but I'll extend it with ceilings later on. Next, I moved on to the walls. I placed arcane stone windows and built the walls up two tiles high. I initially placed the back windows a little bit higher, though I would eventually change that. I also added my wall trims quite early to keep that consistent element throughout the build as I quite like the wall trim pieces. From here I built a small platform at the back of the ground floor that will serve as the staircase which also helps to cover up the small bit of ruins jutting through the floor. The stairs come up to a single tile connecting to the first floor which I created by capping off the walls with insulated wooden ceilings to match those below. On the first floor I kept things pretty much the same as the ground. I added windows around the front and removed the ground floor windows at the rear so they didn't interfere with the symmetry on this floor. I built the walls two tiles high and added a couple of window frames for visual variety. After adding some more trims to the bottom of the first floor walls, I capped them off with stone brick ceilings that will form the balcony and the third floor staircase. Atop that ring of ceilings, I built stone brick walls to mark out the interior area of the second floor. I initially placed two doorways but decided to remove the rear facing one for streamlining. I covered the remaining floor space with insulated wooden ceilings and built a simple staircase to connect the first and second floors together. To finish things off, I then built the walls up two tiles. Next I built the walls and sloping sides up on the balcony to come to a single tile point on the rear of the build. This area will serve as a balcony and a staircase upwards, and I also included a single tile viewing platform on the ground level of the third floor. I used stone brick ceilings and stairs to build up this staircase, keeping the stairs a tile below the exterior walls so it's harder to fall off. Once the stairs were done, I covered the top of the walls with insulated wooden ceilings to create the third and final floor. I placed a stone brick door frame and some arcane windows, and then built the walls up two tiles high. I then added trims at the foot of the third floor walls and covered the top of the walls with insulated wooden ceilings again to prepare for the roof. As part of that preparation, I used stone brick walls and sloping sides to form a curved open gable roof mount. I then moved on to the roofing, which was quite simple. 
I use reinforced stone roof pieces, including a mini gable in the centre of the roof. From there I added a small viewing platform onto the second floor balcony to look over the front, and built some sloping sections to run either side of the windows and on the rear. This is mainly for architectural detail, so it's not necessary if you don't like how they look. I then added a extra ring of ceilings around the ground floor base plate to match the blueprint you saw earlier. I'll later enclose this area which gives the build a lot more shape. I ran a pillar down to the ground off the bridge and quickly made a small, simple landing platform for the elevator. It could of course just sit on the ground below, but I'd prefer it to be sat on something a bit more solid. This is a very small part of the build, so you can design this any way you'd prefer. Mine was quite simple and it works well for the minor role it plays in this build. I then went to the rear of the build, and realised I hadn't utilised the rear side of the pillar. I used ceilings, stairs and pillars to build out a 5x2 extension that will serve as an exterior platform that can be used for basically whatever you like. I fenced this segment off to make it safe, used sloping sides to merge it into the base plate below, and placed door frames underneath to make it look a bit more interesting. Finally, I built up the exterior balcony to enclose it. I used stable frames here, though I'll admit I completely forgot that the large wall trims fit inside the doorways anyway, so you can do this part without the stable frames. I built the door frames up one tile and capped off the balcony with reinforced stone roof pieces. I ended up taking these side skirts on the side windows and the back and running them down into the roof pieces to better shape the design, which does look a lot better. I also added a wedge section at the front that can be used to conceal a light source. Finally, when the shutter build was done it was then time to of course furnish. This build is pretty high up and looks impressive from the ground with quite a limited footprint given the elevator platform. I will say though, it's a pretty long ride up, even on a fast elevator. Reaching the top, I've lit the build with mostly natural light sources aside from a concealed white radium torch. The covered exterior balcony works quite well, and can be followed around to the rear platform which looks across to the savannah. Entering the base, the ground floor is a living area designed for comfort. I've included some storage options on this floor, including the new containers from the Battle Pass, which are quite visually nice for builds like this. Up to the first floor, this is the first workshop area. This build can be for both roleplay and PvE, so I wanted to showcase the capability of both, 
and there's plenty of room for workbenches and storage in this design. On the second floor is a smaller workshop for tanning and smithing. This is a pretty small space, but it works well with the workbenches I chose and doesn't feel too cluttered. The front balcony looks towards the Ashlands and also leads up to the third floor, which again has a viewing platform towards the savannah. Entering the third floor, this is the bedroom. I've gone for a fairly lavish design. The bed is raised nicely off the floor, the room includes some green elements that aren't present elsewhere in the build, and the arcane windows allow for a good view across Siptar which is one of the major benefits of this build. And there we have it, a base on a ruined pillar in the floodlands of the Isle of Siptar. Thanks for watching, and don't forget that the first episode of Season 3 of Settlers drops on the 7th of April. It's a very dark and twisted tale, quite the contrast to previous seasons, so I'm excited to finally be able to show you guys what I've been working on behind the scenes for a couple of months. As always, if you have any build ideas, feel free to let me know in the comments. Of course, a massive thanks to our wonderful esteemed Coffee Cultists for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.